All right, seventh period, here we go. Um, we're going to go over the homework, and as we go over the homework, we'll talk about things will be on the test next class. Your test is on Wednesday. Um, and so on the test, you know, we're going to cover all these concepts and more. We'll talk about which questions will be you know, good for multiple choice or free response, and how that organic chemistry stuff we talked about will also be worked into this. Are there any questions before we start? Yeah. Um, Calvin. Number two? Number two. Well, we're going we're gonna to go over each question, Calvin, okay? So you don't... I'm definitely got Okay, that's all right. Um, so the first question, we have a whole bunch of terms. Make sure you know all the terms. Don't just, you know, focus on the one answer here. Uh, yeah, miscible means that things will mix together. They'll dissolve together. Uh, you could use that term like dissolves like, right? That means that things will mix together. What does that also mean if like dissolves like? Unlike dissolves unlike. Wiley, what? That, that polar will dissolve polar, nonpolar will dissolve nonpolar. What about, will, will a polar molecule dissolve a nonpolar molecule? Probably not. not very well, very, very poorly. Yeah, great, good job, Wally. Um, all right, uh, unsaturated, what does the term unsaturated mean? Whoa, that doesn't help. What does unsaturated mean? Okay, well, you're thinking in terms of organic chemistry. Yeah, in terms of organic chemistry, it means that it's got double bonds or triple bonds. It doesn't have as many hydrogens as possible. But in terms of solutions, what does the term unsaturated mean in terms of solutions? Lamia, yes? Uh, not all the solute Right, not all of the solute is dissolved, and it can dissolve even more. Good job, Lamia. All right. Um, so the, the solution could actually hold, hold a lot more not a lot more, but more of the solute in that solvent. Uh, polar liquids, I think we've gone over that one over and over again. You may have to draw the, the Lewis dot diagram to figure out if it's polar. But for the most part, you guys are pretty good at figuring that out. Uh, saturated, who can give me an idea? Yes, what does saturated mean? The, good job. The maximum quantity of solute that can dissolve into a solvent at a very specific temperature. And by saying specific temperature, you're implying that if we change the temperature, we will change how much you can, like so if we cool it down, it might lower how much <coughs> solute. If we raise it up, the temperature, we might be able to get more. Um, saturated, I think we already talked about that one. What does super saturated mean? Yeah, Wiley. It's when, yeah, it's when the solution is actually holding more than the saturated point. You've gone beyond the saturated point, and somehow it's actually holding more than it should. And if you add anything else to it, all of that excess will precipitate out as a solid. Um, that usually occurs when you create a solution at a very high temperature. You dissolve a lot of solute in at a high temperature, and then when you cool it down, it shouldn't be able to hold it anymore. So say you put 80 grams of salt in at 100 degrees Celsius, and then you cool it down to 50, and the maximum saturation point is you know, 30 grams. But for some reason, that extra salt's not falling out yet. Well, it's not falling out because it hasn't found a point to start around. And the second you add one crystal, it starts. Um, it's pretty hard to actually show this because you have to have a nice round bottom flask that doesn't have any imperfections on it because if you have any imperfections it'll start on the on the imperfection just as if you start through a seed crystal in there we might look at a video of that a little bit later yes uh, we'll try to look at phase diagram you're talking about phase diagrams and the critical point that's just like a random fact but I'm not going to ask you about what a critical point is but if you look at a phase diagram that, that critical point is where the the boiling point line or vaporization line kind of just disappears between the liquid and gas phase. So you're going up the, the line, all of a sudden just, it's gone. You're like, what happened there? Yes, Calvin. Didn't Bill Ketzel do an awesome science experiment with super saturated? You know, Calvin, Bill Ketzel did do an awesome science fair experiment with super saturated sodium acetate solutions and hand warmers. But, uh, Calvin, Bill has still not brought in the things I requested of him. Oh, you gave them Mr. Shangra, not to me. All right. 
Well, good to know. Okay. All right, let's go to number two here. Uh, we're going to just throw up the math and then uh, show. So we're, we're talking about um, <clears throat> the comparison of pressure and concentration. And when we do that, there's a constant relationship between the two. What is, what is this law called? Henry's law, right. Henry's law is the relationship between pressure and concentration, and it involves some sort of constant. That constant depends on the substance you're dissolving, so it's really only constant for that thing. So, so if we plugged in the values for oxygen here, the pressure and the concentration for oxygen, we'd get a, a K. But since it's a constant, we could kind of create our own equation like this. We don't really ever need to solve for K. Um, before we actually plug the numbers in, what are some different ways you can measure concentration? Here it's measured in grams per liter, so that's density. What's another way we can measure concentration? Molar, molar mass in terms of molarity, so moles per liter, molarity. Molality, mole fraction, he's rolling them off. Mass percent, good job, Lexi, good job, yeah. <laughs> Just rolling them off there. That was awesome. So you could have mass percent, mole fraction. You could have uh, molarity, molality, all sorts of things. Any way of measuring concentration is acceptable. Um, and of course, the units of pressure could be all over the place also. It's really just kind of a plug and chug. We have uh, one atmosphere. We have 0 .01, 0 0.041 is equal to three atmospheres. That's supposed to be a three over X being the new concentration and we got this value. Um, does it make sense that the concentration is increasing? We've increased the pressure. We're, we're pushing more on this solution, so we should be able to get more gas to dissolve into it. Haban, yeah? Um, so gases dissolve at high pressures? Gases dissolve better at high pressures because they're being forced into the liquid, because they're having more collisions with the liquid, therefore you're going to get more into the liquid, and they're not bonding very well with the liquid. You know, oxygen and nitrogen don't really bond very well because they're nonpolar, and therefore they're not going to dissolve very well in this polar liquid. They will slightly because there's some London dispersion forces that occur between the liquid and the, and the gas, but not extremely, just a little bit. Um, and then if you, release, if you release the pressure, if you drop the pressure, well, it's not holding in as much, so those London dispersion forces kind of break apart in the gas for lack of a better word, bubbles out, you know, and then it, it comes out of the solution. All right? Any questions on number two before we go to the next one? Sydney, you good? Okay, thanks. All right, uh, number three. This is pretty much the same question, just a new problem. So we have uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus three over one atmosphere is equal to x over 0.2, oops that backwards over 2.5 I did just for sake of making my math easier I just flipped the relationship over I did concentration over pressure is equal to concentration over pressure because um, I like to solve for X on top cross multiplied and got my new value what are the units on this new value that weren't in any of these answers molarity right and it's in molarity because this one that we were given was in molarity so our answer here is going to come out in molarity. Good? All right. Uh, number four, we're looking for the mass percent, and they've given us one piece of extraneous information, information we don't need. What piece of information do we not need? Le yeah, Lexi, good job. Density. We don't need the density at all. Um, mass percent is just the one part divided by the total, so it'd be 23.7 over the total here is 300. 98.7 times 100. Where did I get the 398? The yeah. I added these two masses together. We add those two masses together to get this total down here. And that's 5.94%. Um, really be careful in your sig figs. Don't round till the end. I accidentally rounded partway through as I was doing one of the other problems. And I got the wrong answer because I was rounding as I was going instead of now, being careful about it. Um, this is not likely to be a multiple choice question on the test, though, is it? No, because it's, it's too much math that's out there, but uh, more like a free response question that you might then do something with in a follow-up question. 
Questions on three or four? You good? Ari, you okay? All right. All right, so here we have uh, a diagram that shows saturations at different temperatures. Let's, uh, let's zoom in on the diagram for a second. Wow, this is way too zoomed in. But so as you pick a, tip, a, a solid, let's say we pick this potassium uh, chlorate here, you can see it's 70 degrees Celsius. You can go across. You can get 30 grams to dissolve. 30 grams of potassium chlorate will dissolve into 100 grams of water. What if you tried to put 38 grams in at that temperature? Yeah, that extra gram wouldn't dissolve. It would stay a solid. You could say it's a precipitate. Yeah, good job, Haban. You call it a, it's going to sit to the sink to the bottom. That's fine. Um, so anything above 30 at this, is that your calculator? That's my cal. You dropped my calculator. Come on, Wiley. What are you doing? Okay, yeah, that. Wiley. What? Um, is there a reason why some of them are curved, where it's like sodium chloride, like a line? Yeah, um, some of these are straight up two ions, and so they're breaking apart pretty easily into just two ions. And I think those tend to have a more linear relationship. I, I'm just theorizing. I don't know the the real real answer to your question. So I'm going to say that these other ones, though, like this lead nitrate here, um, this potassium uh, dichromate, when they dissolve and get in the higher concentrations, they might not 100% dissociate. Like, like this one's supposed to dissociate into three ions, two potassiums and a dichromate. But when the concentration gets higher and higher, it might not be. It might be going one potassium and then the other. It's un, un, so it's like a potassium and a dichromate still attached together. So I think that might be going on. So you're still getting it to dissolve, just not completely. And you get these nice, but pretty graceful curves, if, if I do say so. They're not angular at any point. Haban? Um, I don't know. That's pretty weird. Cesium sulfate really not following the trend at all, is it? Yeah. That's really weird. Something about cesium sulfate that it actually decreases solubility at high temperature. Yeah. That's very odd. But that is one important thing to point out. I mean, somebody could easily ask a very simple question that is, which of these does not follow the trend like the others? That, that's a pretty obvious one. Um, I am going to post this uh, whole thing as a PDF afterwards. And there's a video, actually, that I've linked this to that explains how to use this graph between minutes 11 and 14. But I basically just explained it. But if you want to hear somebody else talk about it for three minutes, you can watch that video. It's not that exciting, though. It's, it's just a different voice. Same idea. Um, so here we have those terms again, saturated, supersaturated, unsaturated. And we're supposed to look at a sample of 49 grams of water. Oh, sorry, potassium nitrate, which is potassium. This is the potassium nitrate. All right. And so 49 grams is dissolved in 101 grams of water at 100 degrees Celsius. So the way over here at 100 degrees Celsius, and they got basically 50 grams. So let's just kind of draw a line across here. And then they cooled it down to 30, but it's still got, it's above that saturation line right there. It's above that line. So right now, if it hasn't precipitated out, it's currently supersaturated. At 30 degrees Celsius, should it be able to hold 49, 50 grams of potassium nitrate? No, it shouldn't. So right now, it's holding more than it should. So technically, it's supersaturated. Questions on that one? Yeah, Haban. Um, I chose A, but I don't get why it's E. Well, it, it was dissolved here, and then they cooled it down, and they crossed that saturation line, right? And at this point, it's supposed to be saturated. But if you go past that point, and it's still dissolved, then technically it's called supersaturated. This term hydrated means that the compound has waters attached to it in the crystal state. Like, I think we've seen in, in labs, we've seen this. Um, 
This is hydrated copper sulfate, and this is a solid. This is copper sulfate pentahydrate. And hydrates are, are solids that have some water attached to them, even though they're solids. You don't see the solid because it's, it's a, you don't see the water because it's dissolved on, it's attached to it. Yeah. Dilute is unsaturated. Those are two terms that very mean pretty much the same thing. Dilute, dilute tends to mean that the concentration is really low, but dilute is also unsaturated. Now, technically, you could be unsaturated and not dilute, meaning unsaturated, you're really close to that point of being saturated. Well, if you're close to being saturated, you're unsaturated, but if that, does, that means you're not dilute, though. Right, so if you were just below, let's just switch colors here. If you were just below whatever that red one is again, just below that, you're unsaturated. But you probably wouldn't call that dilute because you've got a lot dissolved in. You'd probably say, well, if you only had this many grams dissolved in, that would be dilute. You've barely got anything in there. That's the concept of dilute. Or the other, the, when you use dilute as a verb, that means to add water and dilute it down. Ari. Ari. Be saturated, it should be at the maximum point in the line. Yeah. Okay. Melissa. I still don't understand how I got super saturated. So how I got super saturated? Okay. So we have, let's zoom in here. So it was at 100 degrees, it was over here, and then they cooled it down, and now it's at 30 degrees, it's right here. This line is its saturation line. And currently, it has, at 30 degrees Celsius, it's actually above that line, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the saturation line, and it's above the saturation line. So it's super saturated right now, because it's above it. Mm -hmm. Good job, Melissa. Thank you. Lamia, did you have a question? Uh, how do you define placated? Placated, I don't, off the top of my head, remember what that means. That's, yeah, that's play, placate. Placate is to satisfy or try to make someone happy, and I, I don't think I can placate you on this one. So, sorry, Lamia. Um, I threw one more thing up here. I actually added a question to number five because there's, there's a lot of ways you could use this. There's a lot of ways you could use this. Uh, so I, I created a question. A solution saturated potassium dichromate has an elevated boiling point around and so I was like, well, if it's saturated and it's at the boiling point, what's the boiling point of water? 100. 100. So I said, okay, I'm here at 100. Potassium dichromate is right there. How many grams would that be? 80-ish, right? It's about 80 grams of potassium dichromate at 100 degrees Celsius. So then I started doing the whole thing with the uh, delta T I M K B. And I took the mass, 80 grams that could be dissolved, divided it by the molar mass so I could figure out how many moles of potassium dichromate that would be. And then I said, those moles, that's going in right here, divided by is 100 grams. So that's really 0.1 kilograms. What do we call this piece here? The moles divided by the kilograms of solvent? Molality. The molality. Yeah, the molality. Good job, Pat. Um, and then where, does this, where did I get this I value from? I of three. Right, there's three ions. Good job, Lexi. It's got three ions in it. There's two potassiums and a dichromate. That's three ions, three pieces to that. I am making an assumption here that is probably not an appropriate assumption, but I'm assuming it's completely dissociating into two potassiums and a dichromate. It might not be. And if it wasn't, it would give you an I value. It would say I, in this case, is 2.64 or something. It would give you an I value to plug into that. What's the name of the I? Yeah, Pat. It's the Van Hoff factor. Yeah. So it's called the Van Hoff factor. And that's one of the things that I think we've realized is pretty annoying in chemistry. If you don't know the term, you might not know what the number applies to. So the Van Hoff factor for this ion is 2.64. And you'd be like, Great. I don't know what that is in the equation, though. So in this case, the Van Hoff factor is represented by I. I always thought of I as the number of ions. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I remembered it. Did you have a question, Pat? Yeah. I see you over there, Haban. Just a sec. Yeah, Pat. Uh, on, the, on the chart here, like the left, uh, one of the lines, like another, if you want to give half a nitrate, 
Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're to the left, if you're over here, and this is the line, anywhere to the left of that line would be considered supersaturated. Yeah. Unsaturated. If you're to the right of it, if you're to the right of it, you're unsaturated because the maximum is above you. If you're to the left of it, you're supersaturated because the maximum is below you. Yeah. Lexi. That's what the whole graph is called. It is. Uh, I didn't put that on there, but it, it, it's a graph that shows the saturation point. Is it on the homework? I must have cu uh, I cut it out of the picture. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the saturation. Uh, it's a saturation graph. It shows the maximum solubility of these different salts. Haban? Um, so last year, like on one of our tests, based on case diagram, like they said, how many would dissolve in 50 grams of water? Is there a ratio to that? How much? Well, yeah. If you had 50 grams of water. This is 100 grams of water. You just divide everything in half. So since at 100 grams, we can get, let's come over here, 30. For potassium chlorate, I could get 30. So for 50 grams, I should be able to get 15. It's, just, it's a direct relationship. Yeah. yeah. All right. If there aren't any other questions about this, we're going to stop the video and start a new video so that we don't make a video that's crazy long.